Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you how to repair your uh, Popcorn Hour network media player. Uh, this one suffers from a bad USB port, uh, it suffered an accident and uh, now the USB port does not make a good connection with the cable and uh, the best uh, solution for it is to be replaced. Um, you will going to need uh, some tools for this. Uh, you will need first a soldering iron. Uh, this one has uh, adjustable temperature. Uh, a soldering, desoldering pump. This will extract uh, the solder or tin from the components from the main board. You will going to need a precision screwdriver and uh, of course a new USB port plug you can buy this from uh, local stores uh, component electronic component stores or uh, I don't know uh, I bought this from eBay you can buy a big pack of them only for a few cents or one dollar uh, it's also possible that you will need a larger screwdriver and uh, maybe some additional pliers oh, uh, to open the popcorn now it's very simple it has uh, these uh, big uh, thumb screws we'll take them off and we'll have uh, immediate access to its internals uh, you can also use an internal hard drive if you have the USB problem but uh, if uh, you want to connect another drive then you need to replace the USB port. So we now need to take off the main board. The main board has a few screws here, here, also has the screws on the back. We, you will going to need to take the whole board out. It's fixed by this plate. So you can either take all the screws out or you can first take these screws and open it up with this board. So you can take off the sides. This one cannot be taken as it's held by the USB port. You can uh, either also remove this screw that keeps this column here, but it's not the case. So I'm going to remove this screw first. Also, it has one right here. and another one here next to the power plug it's off now we got movement and we can gently pull it out the front panel and the rear panel comes with the full main board so this is the bed connector you can see it here and to replace it we are going to take all this solder here out it's a desoldering pump we got this one this is from the chases of the connector this is also from the chases of the connector and these are the pins of the connector the data pins of the USB plug so I'm going to plug in the soldering iron let it hit to operating temperature and uh, we are going to remove the connector so we are up to the temperature uh, I have uh, set the soldering iron at around 350 degrees centigrade uh, I will going to start to heat one of the terminals the one from the chassis you are going to hit it very well until it gets fluid so that you so that you can extract it with the pump as you can see small part from the original solder 
has been sucked into the pump. We'll have to continue this until we can uh, free up all the terminals so that we can uh, safely extract the old and faulty connector so that it will be easy to replace it with a new connector. Uh, you are going to observe that uh, the solder is not melting very fast. This is because it's uh, ecological, as I call it, uh, tin. It's no longer a normal tin. Uh, soldering uh, tin until a few years ago was made with lead, which is uh, toxic. And uh, they decided that uh, they should not use lead anymore. And uh, they make this uh, new ROHS uh, tin, which does not co have uh, lead into the composition, but uh, it's uh, very hard to melt it and you need to set a higher temperature on your soldering iron to melt it. As you can see, on the smaller contacts, it's easier to extract the tin. You need is just a bit of patience and they all will be released. I'm also going to show you a small trick when you are battling this kind of solder that uh, does not want to come off easily. You can uh, use your own solder wire uh, you are going to need a good quality solder wire. This one has uh, uh, lead in it and also silver. And uh, this one uh, heats and melts very easy. And you can combine it with your current uh, solder, as you will see here. And this one will make better contact with the old uh, tin on the board, making, making it very easy to heat up the old solder and extracting it. And you can see now that this one it's almost free. And we'll also look here, this one here, I'm going to add my solder over it. it is good, let it combine, we are preparing the pump and now we extract it all and you can see now a big part of it was extracted already. So I have extracted most of the solder from the board. Now I'm going to use a plier, I'm going to grab the connector and I'm going to hit, try to hit all the four pins, data pins of the board gently. Uh, this one are almost out and I'm going to try to wiggle the connector and try to take it out. I'm going to hit its terminals here, I'm going to move it easy. and out. Now I'm going to clean all the holes here with the pump and I'm going to use some flux also to help me clean the board very well to prepare it for the new connector. I'm going to add the flex now just a bit of over each hole here. Uh, we're going to clean this mess up after that and now we are going to take the excess out and gonna close up close it so for you to see it better and 
we are going to heat up the hole very well and take out the excess and also here for the data pins and the next hole and the next one and this one and also this one so let's take a look Now you can see through the holes, they are empty. This means that the new connector should fit straight through. And it fits. And all the pins are out here. The chassis pins and also all the four data pins. Now I'm going to use some tin hold solder. Uh, we are going to use small amounts. We don't want to create too big blobs. Just to fill the holes up and uh, to be sure that you have a nice uh, finish when uh, the solder uh, it's uh, shiny it means that you have a good uh, soldering that uh, will not uh, crack over time and the data pins just small amounts you don't want to add too much or it will connect more pins than necessary giving you trouble uh, I don't know if you notice at the beginning when uh, I first uh, took it apart uh, this one had a solder between this uh, pin here and this one made only from tin we need to make that uh, connection otherwise it will not work So I'm going to fill this hole up and add sufficient solder between the two to make a bridge connection and it's done. As you can see it's connected. We are going to check them. Now this is one, this one's okay, this one it's okay. Alright. Uh, we are going also to clean the board, we cannot leave it like that and uh, we will see better the solders. As you can see, using a uh, desoldering pump creates a lot of mess, small uh, solder particles that uh, are not uh, only on the table but also small fragments are on the board as you can see. So. A good uh, practice is to clean the board after uh, you repaired it, also to remove the excess flux. flux sorry. Uh, I use uh, for cleaning this, it's uh, isopropylic alcohol, it's a uh, high concentration 99.9 purity, uh, it's very strong stuff. Uh, I'm going just to put a small amount into a cap. I also take uh, note that this is highly flammable and I use a toothbrush and now I'm going to brush the board I'm going to insist over the area where the flux was uh, those uh, black spots I'm going to add some more uh, this one will evaporate very fast and uh, will not leave any traces so now I'm going to show you the results as you can see it almost looks like it came out the factory so a good practice is to brush not only the uh, area you worked on also the neighboring area just to be sure that no particles have been left on the board uh, 
creating a possible short circuit or something. Just brush it very evenly on all surface and uh, also use a lot of alcohol on it to be sure. Also regularly clean the brush on a piece of uh, paper towel or something like that to remove the residues from the brush and after that leave it to dry it will dry very fast as you can see and uh, we are going to put it all back together so the board is dry uh, it, as you may have noticed it has a big uh, cooler on it it's a heat sink from the for the cpu and uh, you may also notice that this is made from aluminium it's cap and has this pad here this is a thermal pad it uh, takes heat away from uh, the heat sink and also distributes it to the aluminium plate and this also acts as a cooler for the player uh, you can gently use something to clean this I'm going to use a general purpose wet uh, napkin and I'm going to remove part of the dust here we don't uh, want to insist uh, very much that uh, will not uh, break this and also clean this a bit right uh, now we have the opportunity also to clean the underside of the board this uh, part it's uh, under the main board and this creates a lot of heat and the heat attracts uh, circulation not of only air but also dust so we can take a bit of time now and also clean the dust under the board this will also help uh, improve cooling because uh, aluminium absorbs heat easy and also disperses it very easy and this being very close to the main board uh, it takes a lot of heat and uh, if it's clean it will also transmit the heat over the entire plate uh, and uh, it will improve cooling a bit so better cooling it's better for the whole player so now it's clean also we can also take the time to clean a bit the front panel these things get very dusty so, to put it back together we are going to do the reverse of what we did at the beginning we are going to put this here the front panel and now we are going to simultaneously fix the back and the front panels at one time and they are fixed now we are going to add the side meshes there are installed uh, we are going to put the inboard screws back one near the power here don't over tighten them one it's here and the last one it's near the USB port Okay, check them to be tight, but not very tight. 
okay and we can now put the cap back uh, do not forget this one stays over the heat sink and mount it this way do not install it other way you cannot install it but you can see that is wrong the curvature here must correspond to the curvature here so this will make contact with the heat sink And that's it, we have successfully replaced the USB connector on the Popcorn Hour network media player. Thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for other do-it-yourself repairs. Bye bye!